Um, as we start getting near the end of my presentation, uh, I have some undeniable truths. Um, some are with confidence, some without. Um, you can't start a profit into a cow. It, it's not possible. Anyone in the cow calf has probably tried it once. They almost went broke doing it. Same goes with farming. You can't cut every, every nutrient. If you are, you better start selling or generating and naming your price. Okay, sell direct to consumer. If you're not going to do it, you can't start a profit. Be willing to spend a little bit of money. It can decrease your cost over time. But that being said, the easiest cost to cut in any cost production is always the largest one. And the largest one's always land. Look at how can you change our rotation. How can we get more solar energy captured from every acre every year? Soil testing is like a compass. Tissue testing is a GPS. And then balance beats quantity every time. Start off with that. Soil testing is something Conklin talks significantly about, and I love soil testing. It gets you pointed in the right direction, but it is not the be all end all. Tissue testing is. Just because you have enough nutrients in a soil does not mean it's getting into the plant. Folks, I put on a ton of manganese and a ton of zinc, and I still don't get enough into the plant. Every single tissue test I have says I get enough zinc into my soil. Or I have enough in my soil, and every single tissue test I have after V7 says I don't have enough to get into the plant. And I know that's economical. Tissue testing also can be hugely, hugely effective in learning where to grow. I have not found a tissue test level of boron that is too high to limit yield. Where do I have an economic level? I've gotten some up to 25 parts per million. We did 323 bushel corn this year in the NCGA contest on that one. I clearly haven't put it high enough yet. I haven't killed it. That's my fault. I should kill something every year trying to push the limits, okay? Balance beats quantity every time. This is a picture of corn I had in 2019. We were trying to push some yields here. We were putting, uh, really didn't get to dabble into strip tilling. Um, that was the first year we actually, excuse me. Excuse me. That was the first year we uh, really started pushing nitrogen with our strip till rate. Naturally, we don't put on any P and K um, in a dry broadcast system, but banding nitrogen sounded like a great way to work. We put a lot of nitrogen on our corn on corn ground, somewhere close to 175 pounds an acre, which we can get away with that with the 17 CEC soil. Problem is, at V10 to V12, when our corn was racing in a cold year, our, our potassium wasn't available in, in the soil. Potassium, for those of you who don't know, needs to be upwards of 65 to 70 degree soil temp before it becomes plant available. What that did is it created an imbalance of fertility in the soil. I had a lot of available nitrogen and very little available potassium. They go in one for one, right? It's just a pool, no matter what. Equal balance what's available. Well. When you get a, your parts per million of nitrogen over 6% in the, you get 6% nitrogen in the plant and less than 2 potassium, and you catch a windstorm, your corn looks like that. I could have avoided every single bit of that problem by dropping 75 pounds of nitrogen for my strip till. I was trying to push yield and it actually hurt me. I could have also fixed that by adding some potassium to the look of potassium a little bit. We got a product called Sidekick to help do that. Balance beats quantity every time.